What I'm discussing in today's video has profoundly important implications for the world, for sustainable energy, for Tesla, for national security, and more. I feel compelled to make this video. I wish I didn't, but I really have no choice. What I'll be discussing is difficult, complicated, and nuanced. But first, a warning. If you're emotionally or intellectually challenged, and how do you know if that's you? Well, if your butt began to tingle at the very descriptors you just heard, that's definitely you. And if that's you, it's best to stop watching now. Your butt will hurt. You will get triggered. You will poop your pants. And nobody wants that. So, come back tomorrow. I'm going to discuss the Russia-Ukraine conflict, the role companies like Tesla and SpaceX can and are playing, and I'll share my completely uninformed opinions as some idiot on the internet who doesn't know anything about anything. This is a real-time stream of consciousness. This video is for Tesla stock investors. Okay, so, did the babies leave the room? Is it just us adults? Good, let's get into it, but first, a message for Putin. Please kindly fuck off and die. Okay, let's get into it. This is the point in the video where I'd normally promote my Patreon and affiliates, but it's not the time or the place. I will be running ads on this video on YouTube simply because rumor has it that videos that don't have ads appearing in them are less likely to be promoted, therefore less people see this, and it's an important message to get out there. All proceeds from this video will be used to help the people of Ukraine, so please let me know in the comments below what you guys and girls think are the best methods for doing that. Here we are over on Twitter, a tweet from the Vice President of Ukraine. Quote, Elon Musk, while you try to colonize Mars, Russia try to occupy Ukraine. While your rockets successfully land from space, Russian rockets attack Ukrainian civil people. We ask you to provide Ukraine with Starlink stations and to address sane Russians to stand. A few hours, yes, hours later, not days later, Elon Musk responding. Starlink service is now active in Ukraine. More terminals en route. This is an incredibly important and extremely useful thing to do. If we take a step back, it's stunning that a company run by a private citizen is even capable of offering satellite internet access at the drop of a hat to a country currently being invaded by Russia. Starlink isn't a communication service that can be easily cut off. Unlike some of the ground-based communication services, which could be bombed, destroyed, etc. Next minute, people within Ukraine can't communicate among themselves or share messages with the outside world. Now, let's look at a couple of tweets from the head of Russia's space program, Dmitry Rogozin. Quote, this is through Google Translate, but we get the message here. Do you want to ban all countries from launching their spacecraft on the most reliable Russian rockets in the world? Does anyone get the feeling that old Dmitry here doesn't know about SpaceX? Let's see what else he's got to say. Do you want to destroy our cooperation on the International Space Station? Sounds like Dmitry's panties are in a little bit of a twist. Dmitry is sounding ever more unhinged. If you block cooperation with us, who will save the International Space Station from an uncontrolled deorbit and fall into the United States? Or, by the way, just taking a moment here, sounds a little bit like a veiled threat, doesn't it? F*** with us, we'll deorbit the space station and have it crash on one of your cities. A few screws loose, Dmitry continues. Europe? There is also the option of dropping a 500 ton structure on India or China. Do you want to threaten them with such a prospect? The ISS does not fly over Russia, so all the risks are yours. Are you ready for them? Well, it appears that Dim Eitri, get it, Dim, because uh, I'm not even going to explain that one, forgot about old SpaceX, but sure enough, Elon Musk is there to remind him. So Dimwit over here thinks he has the world, especially the United States, by the balls, when in fact he's actually squeezing his own scrotum. So in the midst of a conflict, a single company founded by Elon Musk, SpaceX, able to step up in two major ways. First, countering the ridiculous threats from the head of the Russian space program, threatening to deorbit the International Space Station, have it crash into somewhere below. Meanwhile, SpaceX and Elon Musk can solve that issue, even if Russia pulls out. The second, providing broadband internet access that can't easily be deactivated. In the context of the Russia-Ukraine conflict, could anyone name a company whose impact is more profound? Serious question. Please let me know in the comments. I'm open to ideas, but I can't think of any. Thank f for Elon Musk and SpaceX. Not a very controversial thing to say, but here's something that will be rather controversial, but it's also accurate and spitting facts that cause butts to hurt is something that I tend to do. We're gonna talk about the moronic, idiotic, lunatical comments and actions from so-called environmentalists. And don't get me wrong here, I think it's important that we transition to sustainable energy generation, storage, supply, everything, duh. As Elon Musk has pointed out, it's tautological. If it ain't sustainable, well, it doesn't pan out too well. But this is a very nuanced issue. Give the most extreme example possible. Let's just say tomorrow you decide to ban use of all fossil fuels. What happens? I'll tell you what happens. The entire fucking global economy collapses. We plunge into the dark ages once again. I'm serious. 
this isn't hyperbole. That's the extreme example of environmentalism. Fossil fuels are evil, stop using them immediately, the end, just that's it, done. This unfortunately is actually the way many of the brains work and well, I don't know if work is probably the word, but don't work. Uh, in many of the minds of people making decisions around the world, which has caused a bit of a problem relating to this Russia and Ukraine conflict. And exactly what is that problem? Well, you see, Russia has many countries by the balls. Many countries are wholly, primarily, or partially dependent on Russia for energy. That's right. And what does that mean? Well, in a situation where a country like Russia, and by the way, I want to be clear, Putin sends forces to invade Ukraine. Doesn't appear like many Russians are on board with this decision. So I'm not referring to the people here, just to be clear. When a moron like Putin decides to invade a country like Ukraine, the world isn't able to react as decisively, quickly, and completely as they would be able to were they not currently bent over by Russia and dependent on them for a huge portion of their energy needs. Of course, it's quite obvious over the long term, it's extremely important for every country on Earth to be completely independent as far as their energy generation, storage and supplies. No country anywhere on Earth should be dependent on another country for energy. If there's ever any conflict, you've got a bit of a problem. No energy, no economy, you don't want that. And here's where we get to the part about some of the brain dead decision making by environmentalists. One example straight off the bat. Biden administration in the United States campaigned heavily on the environment. One of the very first actions taken by the Biden administration related to the Keystone Pipeline. I'm sure many of you will be familiar with this. If you don't know, the Keystone Pipeline is an oil pipeline between Canada and the United States, relating to an ongoing expansion of the pipeline. On January 24th, 2017, President Donald Trump took action intended to permit the pipeline's completion. However, on January 20th, 2021, President Joe Biden signed an executive order to revoke the permit, and it was granted. Instantly, thousands of people out of jobs overnight. Not even kidding. Now don't get me wrong here, I understand the argument. Why do you want to continue to expand this pipeline for fossil fuels? We need sustainable energy. But what happens when you kill the expansion of this pipeline? Well, you still got to get that energy from somewhere and we're not generating enough sustainably. So where's it come from? Let me think here. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, R, R. That letter, R. Ah, Russia, can you see how that might be a bit of a problem? When someone has you by the balls, it's generally not in your best interest to grab their hand and tighten their grip. That's exactly what the United States and many other countries have done. Another classic example of absolutely brain dead decision making, of course, is Germany decommissioning their nuclear power plants. Why? Well, it turns out that most people in the general public are ill-informed idiots, at least on this particular topic. They think nuclear power is extremely dangerous. They're concerned about the environmental issues. They have no idea, no concept about how much energy is generated for every single nuclear plant versus other sources of energy generation. I could go on and on and on and on. The point is, most people in the general population are completely clueless when it comes to nuclear energy, and therefore they're automatically opposed to it because apparently it's really bad. This is not accurate. So of course, Germany engages their brain, nothing really happens, and decides to begin decommissioning nuclear power plants without even considering, wait a minute. Um, okay guys, has anyone thought about uh, where, where do we get the energy? Because these, they, they make a lot, and if we, when we shut them down, where does the rest come from? We're not gonna have to, I don't know, rely on fossil fuels from countries that will then have us by the balls that are nearby, maybe like Russia, <laughs> spoiler alert. That's exactly what happened. At this point in time, there's only so much Germany can do. There's only so much many parts of Europe can do. There's only so much the United States can do because they're all to varying degrees dependent on oil and other fossil fuels from Russia. But don't worry, not all hope is lost. You know what, screw Russia. They can always get the oil from the Saudis. Oh, wait, that might be a bit of a, yeah. Ah, oh, I think there's a bit of a problem here, isn't there? Moral of the story, obviously we need to all, every country needs to become energy independent ASAP, but no sooner than is possible. And by doing things like decommissioning nuclear plants before you're producing equivalent amounts of energy sustainably, and doing things like killing an expansion of a pipeline that's currently providing oil from Canada to the United States and now needing to depend on Russia for that same oil, might be a bit of a mistake. I personally believe the conflict between Russia and Ukraine at the moment will ultimately spur and accelerate the transition to sustainable energy, generation, storage, and supply. It's gonna be a great thing overall, but I think there's a very valuable lesson. Ideological extremism, for example, ban all fossil fuels immediately, next minute the global economy collapses and we go back to the dark ages. 
is not helpful. Personally believe that environmental extremism has played a major role in how the world has reacted and responded to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. There's been a lot of talk and a lot of sanctions, but few countries are able to really step up and drop the hammer because they're partially dependent on Russia for energy. As you can see, this is a very complicated and nuanced issue. And now I wanna share a very short clip from a news organization who wears their right-leaning bias on their sleeve, so make no mistake, this isn't unbiased coverage. But I think a few fair points are actually made. And on reflection, some of the statements, some of the quotes you're about to see may not only be reasonable, valid and fair, but in fact have been intelligent and wise. And just quickly, before we watch this clip, it's important that everybody watching understands exactly what NATO is. I'm sure most of you will have heard the name, but just in case, I know a few people won't have the full details. Allow me to quote from Wikipedia. NATO constitutes a system of collective security whereby its independent member states, aka different countries, agree to mutual defense in response to an attack by an external party. In other words, if somebody decides to fuck with a member country of NATO, the other members of NATO agree that they'll come and kick their fucking ass. The United States is part of NATO, as well as a number of European countries, including Germany, France, and Italy. So keep this in mind as we watch the clip. Do you miss him yet? Do you regret falling for the fake hysteria pushed by the media that Trump was a danger to world peace, that it was going to start world wars and usher in an age of violence and conflict? The truth is, far from starting World War III, Trump engineered multiple peace treaties in the Middle East and implemented policies that weakened Russia and China. And he did it all the while whilst being maligned as some Russian puppet. He warned Europe and indeed the world what would happen if countries kept bolstering Russia by becoming dependent on its oil and gas. Yeah, you're supposed to be guarding against Russia and Germany goes out and pays billions and billions of dollars a year to Russia. So we're protecting Germany, we're protecting France, we're protecting all of these countries. And then numerous of the countries go out and make a pipeline deal with Russia where they're paying billions of dollars into the coffers of Russia. So we're supposed to protect you against Russia, but they're paying billions of dollars to Russia. And I think that's very inappropriate. And the former chancellor of Germany is the head of the pipeline company that's supplying the gas. Uh, ultimately, Germany will have almost 70 percent of their country controlled by Russia with natural gas. So you tell me, is that appropriate? Trump pushed hard for NATO members to increase their spending. Stop strengthening Russia, he argued, and he recognised the security danger that Nord Stream 2 posed, so much so that President Trump signed a new law that imposed harsh sanctions on any firm that helped Russia's state-owned gas company. Guess what the Biden administration did last year? Yep, they waived the sanctions on the company building the gas, gas pipeline between Russia and Germany. Three days ago, Biden reintroduced the sanctions. A tad too late there, Sleepy Joe. President Trump and, frankly, anyone with a functioning frontal cortex knew the dangers of what would happen if Russia was allowed to become an energy superpower. It should have never been allowed to have happened. But Germany is totally controlled by Russia because they were getting from 60 to 70 percent of their energy from Russia and a new pipeline. And you tell me if that's appropriate, because I think it's not. And I think it's a very bad thing for NATO. And I think that these countries have to step it up, not over a 10 year period, they have to step it up immediately. Germany is a rich country. They talk about they're going to increase it a tiny bit by 2030. Well, they could increase it immediately tomorrow and have no problem. But whether President Trump was warning about the dangers of becoming dependent on Russian oil and gas or warning NATO members that they had to spend more to properly protect their countries and region from the likes of Russia, the media just continued to mock and malign him. When Trump addressed the UN in 2018 and warned about Germany becoming reliant on Russian oil, again, he was mocked. This is senior CNN reporter Edward Isaac Dovier who tweeted this. German delegation reaction to President Trump at the UN saying they're on track to become totally dependent on Russian oil. Well, they're not laughing now, are they? Trump was right. Russia now accounts for 65% of Germany's natural gas imports. Germany closed its nuclear power plants and now hands over billions to Russia. As the Wall Street Journal pointed out earlier this year, at two 
decade-old decision to phase out nuclear power and more recent moves to cut reliance on coal in an effort to bring down CO2 emissions means Germany is now more reliant on Russian gas than most of its neighbours, not just for heating, but also for power generation. Germany's dependence on Russian gas has left Europe short of options to sanction Moscow if it invades Ukraine and itself vulnerable should Russia stop gas exports to the West. And here we are. It's a little wonder that despite the lies, gaslighting and disinformation pushed by the bulk of the media about Trump and Russian collusion, the majority of Americans say Putin wouldn't have invaded Ukraine if Trump were president. Yes, according to a new Harvard-Harris poll released Friday, 62% of Americans believe Putin would not be moving against Ukraine if Trump was still in the White House. The other 38% are either stupid or lying. She must be taking classes at the SMR School of Savagery. And don't get me wrong, I wanna make sure that people watching understand this. I'm not some Trump fanatic, okay? The guy's a deeply flawed individual, and that's putting it lightly. But he also actually makes some very valid points. He's discussing members of NATO, whose responsibility the United States has to defend if they need it, and vice versa, are literally giving Russia billions upon billions upon billions upon billions of dollars every single year for fossil fuels, much of which they wouldn't need had Germany, for example, not been decommissioning their nuclear power plants for 20 years, and the United States closing a pipeline between Canada and the US, and on and on and on and on. Now, allow me to share a few lessons, a few takeaways, all my opinion. Number one, for every country on Earth, becoming completely energy independent should take priority over becoming sustainable. Of course, transitioning to a fully sustainable economy, energy generation, storage and supply is necessary and important and should happen as soon as possible, but not at the risk to national security. Over the long term, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine will make this very obvious and I believe this will actually greatly accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy, so there is a silver lining here. But the transition will take time. There's only so many power walls Tesla and other companies can make, only so many solar panels. Another valuable lesson here is to not let ideological extremism cause you to do truly moronic things like the example of Germany. I mean, seriously, decommissioning safe, incredibly efficient power generation options because why? No rational reason at all and becoming dependent on Russia for fossil fuels seems a bit of a silly thing to do. In fact, it doesn't seem it is. It's absolutely fucking brain dead. I absolutely condemn Putin's decision to invade Ukraine. It's absolutely disgusting. I mean, I don't even get me started on that. But there is a silver lining here. I think that this is really going to emphasize and make people understand the world over how important it is to be able to locally generate your own energy, to store that energy, and to not only use that energy, but where needed also supply that to others in your local area. We've also seen how incredibly important a service like Starlink Global Broadband will be in the future. We'll be back to our regularly scheduled programming in tomorrow's video, but I had to make this, I felt compelled, need to get this off my chest to try to understand and explain some of the complexities and nuance around energy, sustainability, fossil fuels, and of course, certain countries around the world having one another by the gonads. And just finally, a couple of very quick, but super important messages. The first, to Putin. Go f yourself. I heard a rumor that Putin translated from Russian equals small man, something like that. Second is to my friends in Ukraine. Most importantly, stay safe. Second, to see the people of Ukraine unite as one to fight in this crisis has inspired the world. Please share your comments below. What do you guys and girls think about the Ukraine-Russia situation? What about the idea of continuing to use and even expand some fossil fuel-based sources of energy until it's feasible to transition to sustainable energy? And I expect in the coming days, perhaps even weeks, I'll have a lot more to discuss on this topic, but I'll post those videos exclusively to Patreon. I know most people watching don't really want to get into the Ukraine-Russia conflict here, so those videos will be available exclusively on Patreon whenever I post them. Check the link in the pinned comment if you're not already signed up. Otherwise, keep an eye out for those. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all.